Hi everyone, I'm instructor Diana Gonzalez and today we're going to look at simple and compound interest. These methods are going to be motivation for us to derive rules later on for savings and borrowing and that's coming up in a few videos. Today, let's talk about how we can make money. To begin, we have to go over some terminology. The principal amount, that is going to be our starting balance, whether that is the money that we're depositing into an account or the amount of money that we've borrowed, that is that initial amount. Now, the way that we use principal in both methods for simple and compound interest varies, but in simple interest, it stays the same. Now, the interest is the money that is earned from a savings or the money that is owed to the bank from borrowing. And this, the interest is accrued by applying a rate onto the principal amount. Which rate? The nominal rate. The nominal rate is a rate of interest that we have over a specific amount of time. Some examples of this are credit cards, like a 16% APR, 24% APR. For loans, it's more like a 5% APR, and that APR is annual percentage rate. Now, the method that we're going to look at first is simple interest. In this method, interest is paid only on the principal amount not on anything else. Let's look through, let's go through an example. You deposit $1,000 into your simple interest savings account, which pays an annual rate of 10%. This is very unrealistic. I wish they paid 10%, but not gonna happen. It gives us nice numbers though. Assuming that you don't make any other deposits or withdrawals, how much will you accumulate after five years? Let us see. As we stated earlier, the principal amount is not going to change. So the principal in this scenario, I'm going to denote that by P, is $1,000. This is the amount that we deposited. Now the interest that is earned, or the interest rate, I mean, interest rate is going to be 10% or 0.1. The interest that is earned right after we deposit those $1,000 is zero. There is no interest. You have to let the money sit in an account before you start accruing interest. So the balance at the end of year zero is going to be $1,000. Now, the principal is going to stay the same for every single year. The interest is always going to be accrued on this initial amount. So this is going to be $1,000 every year. Then the way that we accrue interest is we take 10% of our principal amount which is the same as 0.1 times 1,000. And again, since the principal stays the same for every year, the interest earned is also going to be the same for every year. What does change is our balance. After the first year, we started accruing interest, so our balance is going to be that principal amount plus this interest accrued. Then at the end of our second year, we're going to have our previous balance plus the interest accrued. Are you starting to see a pattern? For year three, we're going to have our previous balance. Now let's use some of our mathematizing module uh, techniques for finding patterns. Instead of repeatedly adding the same term over and over, in mathematizing module, we said that when we have repeated addition, that's the same as multiplication. So in year two, we see that we're adding the same term twice. That's at 0.1 times 1,000. We can simplify this expression to show that the term of 0.1 times 1,000 is being repeated twice. Now we can save us some more time because by year three, we're repeating this interest rate three times, or the interest earned three times. So again, same term repeated three times. Then for year four, we're repeating it one more time. So we're, that's going to be times four. And by the end of the fifth year, this will be times five. From here, we can start to develop our rule. After five years, the accumulated amount was $1,000 plus 0.1 times 1,000 times five. Now, we see that this factor of 1,000 is in both terms. So I'm going to go ahead and factor that out to simplify our expression. And we're left with the following expression. 1,000 times the quantity of 1 plus 0.1 times 5. Look at this expression. It should look, a, the structure should look a bit familiar. We have seen the similar structure in percentages. When we were looking at discounts or when we were looking at tax or percent increase, we said 
that we were going to be looking at the original amount or the old amount, then the one represented that original quantity. Then if we added, we were adding on tax, or if we subtract, we were taking away a percent for discount. Here, what we're adding is the interest earned, which is represented by the rate and the time in years. So this was the original quantity. Let's write a formula where we use term the, the, the terminology that we discussed for simple interest. So the accumulated amount is going to be represented by A is equal to the principal amount, which was the 1,000, times 1 plus the 0.1 we said was the rate, times the time in years. Here is our rule for simple interest. Now, let's look at the other method, compound interest. For compound interest, we're going to introduce another term, and that is compounding period. Compounding period is how often our amount is compounded, or how often we apply the interest onto the principal amount in one year. So if we're compounding quarterly, that means that we're applying the interest to the amount, uh, to the principal amount four times in the year. Monthly means 12 times in one year, yearly uh, once, daily 365. And the way that the principal works in compound interest is it's going to change because compound interest is the method where the interest is paid on the original amount and the accrued interest. So there's a little note here that says the principal is recalculated after every compounding period to accommodate for the interest that was accrued. Let's explore through an example. Again, we deposit $1,000 at 10% annual interest and it's compounded quarterly, so four times. We want to see how much we have in our account at the end of the year. Now, a little fact, we have a compounding period, we have a 10% interest rate. In this case, or in compounding, the interest rate is spread out throughout the year. So when we look at how many compounding periods we have, that tells us how, to, uh, how many pieces to spread the interest rate out into throughout the year. And that is what our I represents. So in our scenario, our interest rate is 10%, and we spread that out over four periods in the year, meaning we have 0.1 divided by 4, which is equal to 0.0. Two. So this is the, um, the rate that we're going to be applying after every compounding period. Instead of applying 10% every time, we spread that out throughout the year, and we're only going to be applying 0.025 every period. Now, we stated that our principal was $1,000. What we're going to be applying every period is going to be the 0.025. So again, we have that initial deposit. That is $1,000. After we deposit, the same rule still applies. We haven't let our money sit for any period, so we don't accrue any interest. Thus, our balance is going to be $1,000. Now, the way that the principal is going to change at the end of every, or at the start of every compounding period, is this balance, this balance is going to become the principal amount at the start of the next compounding period. So here we see $1,000. Now, for March 31st, we've let the money sit for three months. Therefore, we have accrued interest. Our balance is then going to be the original amount that we deposited plus the amount of interest earned. And this is using the same technique that we did in simple interest where we apply the rate onto our principal. But in this case, we're going to be applying the rate divided by the period. So we're going to multiply by 0.025. Since we developed the technique for finding patterns for simple interest by simplifying our expressions, let's go ahead and do that here before the balance increases and it makes it harder to see what we're doing. So I'm noticing that we have the 1,000 in both terms. I'm going to factor that out and we get 1,000 times 1 plus 0.025. Again, similar structure as in percentages and as in simple interest, except we don't have that extra factor here. I'm going to simplify just a little more. And this is going to be our balance at the end of the first compounding period. And as I stated earlier, this balance is going to be carried on and it's going to be our principal for the next compounding period. So here we have 1000 times 1.025. What we should notice, and this is where our knowledge from percentages carries through, is that when we apply this interest rate Again, to determine the interest accrued, we're going to be using this same 1.025 because we're going to be applying 
the interest onto this new balance or onto this new principal. So here we have the 1000 times 1.025 and then we multiply that times 1.025 and this is applying the interest onto our new, our new principal amount. Again, should ring familiar because this is successive rates. Similarly, we're going to notice this pattern where we then apply the balance to the next period and we keep applying the interest through the end of the year. Now we can use, whenever we have repeated multiplication, that is in math, the, uh, the operation of the exponent or the power. So I can simplify this expression to show $1,000 and what we're repeatedly multiplying is that 1.025. In this case, we've multiplied it three times. So we're going to have that power here. And this is going to save us time in writing the expression for the new principle. We also then get to see the pattern that when we multiply 1.025 to this principal amount, the only thing that's changing is our power because now we have another factor of 1.025. Now let's develop a pattern. By the end of the year, we accumulated $1,000 times, and I'm going to separate that 1 plus 0.025 or 1.025 into 1 plus 0.025 to the fourth power. If you notice, this four was the number of compounding periods. We denote this as M. And then we can separate this 1.025, I mean this 0.025. This was our I, which was equal to the rate over M. So from here, we can come up with our pattern for compounding, uh, for compounding interest. So the accumulated amount is going to be the principal amount, the 1,000, times 1 plus i to the, and then we use the word, or the variable n. n is equal to m times t. Or we can also write the rule this way if we want to expand everything. The principal amount plus, or times 1 plus r over m to the mt. In our scenario, we didn't have a t because t was equal to one year, so we would multiply by one. Now something to note, in the example we showed how the principal changed after every compounding period. In our rule, you don't have to make that change yourself. The principal here is always going to denote the initial amount, and in the rule, it takes care of us adding, or us applying the interest, that's the one plus portion. Now, some food for thought, which method causes money to grow faster? Simple interest or compound interest? There's a term that people use in statistics or in commercials and that's exponentially. Exponentially means exponent. So compound interest grows exponentially versus simple interest. Simple interest doesn't have any exponents so the power is one, that means it grows linearly. Compound interest is going to make money grow a lot faster. That is why when you have a credit card, that is how the bank makes money off of you because it is having the money grow exponentially. Let's go make good decisions out there.